Evan Nisselson, entrepreneur for 19 years in Silicon Valley, New York and Europe, mentor at 500 Startups, Seed Camp, Mind the Bridge and Founders Institute, advisor and mentor at TechPix, investor at LDV Capital. Hey everybody, I'm ecstatic to be here. That's me. I'm going to give a presentation later today. Um, but what's unbelievable, we started six months ago with all these great entrepreneurs from around the world. And each month, it's a fantastic to see the progress. Sometimes, as we said earlier, we have successes, and we have failures, and we keep learning. And I'm really proud from the, this morning presentations that we helped uh, the whole TechPeaks team and all the mentors around the world. And now we're going to have the second part of the day, a bunch of four-minute presentations. Um, I will give a keynote about investing, finding, raising money in the United States. We're very honored to have John Bradford from Techstars here, and we're going to have a conversation later today. But I don't want to waste any more time because it's not about me, it's about the entrepreneurs. So here we go. Memoirs is the first company that we'll bring out. All right, let's go. Slide one first. Hello, everybody. My name is Giacomo, and I'm the co-founder of Memoirs, the very first application that allows anyone to turn their online messages into a real book. Allow me to introduce you to Mary and Jamie. Now, Mary and Jamie love each other very much. Now, sadly, Mary and Jamie are saying goodbye. Mary is leaving town for a few months because of her job. Now, Mary and Jamie keep in touch regularly using Facebook messages and emails. Now, they write to each other very passionate messages, and they wish they had a better way to preserve all those conversations. So now Mary wants to create a keepsake to preserve all those beautiful messages. And the solution for her is called Memoirs. It's the ideal and ultimate romantic gift. By using Memoirs, Mary is able to create a professional quality book online in just five minutes without having any knowledge of design or typography. So that was the same problem that my co-founders and I had, and so that's why we made it. So it's extremely easy to use. Mary just needs to go on memoirs.com and log in with her Gmail account. After that, she selects one or more contacts whose messages will appear in the book. She picks her boyfriend and moves on. After that, she takes her time to customize the look and feel of the book. She uploads an image, she comes up with a nice title, also choose a page layout for the interior of the book. Finally, she selects a time period, and all the choices she made so far are reflected in the preview of the book she sees right there. So in the meanwhile, Memoirs fetches the messages and processes them, and then actually produces the book and ships it to the client doorstep. Now, this process is fully automatic, and Mary, in just a few days, receives her very valuable book. So let's get down to business. The photo book market is the most similar market out there. It's worth $2 billion in the US alone. And it's a growing market. It has been growing steadily for the past 10 years. We sell paperbacks for 40 euros, hardcover for 60 euros. And on the hardcovers, we have a hopping 90% margin. Now, this is huge. We're also coming up with a premium book, which will be released early next year. It will be featuring a protective case, golden embossed letters, and will be coming with a 150 euros price tag. We have a 10% growth rate for both our signups and our sales. Those are actual figures for the past six weeks. And we're about to sell our 1,000 book as part of our Christmas campaign. So our competitive advantage is our proprietary technology that allows us to easily integrate new sources of messages really easily. So 2013, in September, we launched with Gmail. November, Hotmail. December, Facebook. Oh my God, where are we going? So of course, there are other companies doing similar things. The photo books companies, for instance, only focus on images. Print and demand companies only focus on the actual production of the book. Other services only work with Facebook or only on Twitter. Now, Memoirs is the only one that does the, all the above. Plus, we connect people. That's what we do. We're enabling people to save their online conversation. So. Later next week, we will release the Facebook version of Memoirs, immediately followed by the WhatsApp and image support, another feature that has been requested many times by our customers. The team is composed of myself and two very talented Portuguese engineers who take care of the code, the user interface, and the marketing. 
Fred and Paolo. We all share a very great love for the written word, and that is also why we started working on memoirs. Now, we're looking forward uh, to be invested on because uh, we are willing to grow faster and scale faster, so please come talk to us. I'm Giacomo, this is Memoirs. Thank you very much. Hi guys, I'm Ricardo, CEO and founder of Flowsby, and we boost e-commerce conversion rates in minutes. I didn't touch anything, okay. Now, now it's okay. So we boost e-commerce conversion rates in minutes. These are two e-commerce stores. They sell the same product at the same price. But the one on the right has more reviews, videos, and pictures about this product. And do you know which is the result? That it converts 67% more. But even if reviews, videos, and pictures are that important, 85% of e-commerce stores still don't have them. So we told to them, and they say that it's too expensive and time-consuming to find, manage, and publish this content on each product page. That's why Flossby does that for them. We provide e-commerce stores with high-quality reviews, videos, and pictures about their products. By doing that, they, we enable them to have rich content on each sales page, and they save 90% of resources. This is a live example of our product. A user comes to this website because he's interested in buying this phone. He clicks on our button on the left, our widget opens, and he can read the reviews, videos, and pictures about this product without leaving the page, staying very close to the buy button. Our technology extracts data from dozens of sources and APIs, select the best ones, and publish them automatically. E-commerce stores pay us monthly subscription fees based on how many products they sell and how much traffic they have. We have customers, great customers, very excited, and we are talking with big companies like Hughes.com that are very interested in us. Our competitors are specialized in plain text reviews, but as we understood, reviews are not enough because shoppers really want to see also videos and pictures, and we are the only one who's able to provide them. Our competitors also cannot get reviews from physical stores, and they don't support multi-language, and we do that. We raised 25,000 euros here at TechPix Accelerator. We launched a bed and we got the first customers. We plan to get 50 customers by June 2014 and to partner with large e-commerce platforms like Magento and WordPress by the end of the year. We are now searching for 150,000 euros to invest in sales in order to acquire more customers faster. Flows by is possible because of an outstanding team of great professionals coming from Italy and the United States. We have a big experience in the e-commerce market, unique skills in data extraction and sentiment analysis, and an internationally awarded product manager. But above all, we were able to attract, with our passion, world-class advisors like Paolo, that is the ex-VP of Danone, and Marvin, that is the ex-VP at Yahoo. So really, come and talk to us, because we are close by and we boost conversion rates in minutes. And invite also us for dinner, please, tonight. Thanks. All right, so like we did this morning, we'll have uh, uh, a couple of minutes while we tell more of the, the program, while you can think about these companies. I want to reiterate, as many of you investors know, it's a unique program where they get an opportunity, many of them, to have matching funds, unlike other programs. So any of your investments in these companies will also have additional funds to go further. One of the unique things that all accelerators try to do and I think we've success, success, been very successful, is bring unique mentors from around the world. So we've got folks from Jawbone, from uh, uh, Odes, from uh, Eventbrite, Jeremiah from Jawbone in San Francisco, uh, James Courier sold three or four companies in Silicon Valley, European mentors. The unique aspect is that we try to match mentors with the teams that are looking for a specific experience. Not te the teams don't get one mentor, they can collaborate with as many as they like. Um, on that note, uh, we also have some local folks like Fausto Germondi, who created Virgilio and Gioco Digitale, uh, Patrick Le uh, Deleve, a guy from uh, the Next Web in Amsterdam, which also mixes publications. 
So these entrepreneurs are not only getting mentors from tech businesses, but they're also getting mentors from the publishing aspect of the side. How do you market your products? And how about some other ones? Matt Meeker um, was the co-founder of Meetup. Uh, dot com, which is one of the early success stories in the United States, now profitable, and now running a company called BarkBox, which actually mails boxes to your dogs as presents and gifts, actually minting money now, doing very well. Uh, who else is in here? Uh, and many, many, many more. Boston from Zamanta, started in uh, Slovenia right nearby, and we'll talk about him in my keynote presentation a little later. On that note, I want to introduce our next startup. Rabbit Fish, come up onto the stage. Let's switch the slides. Hi, I'm David. I am the CEO and co-founder of Rabbit Fish. We help companies in hiring people the right way. We are going after a huge market and our pilot is running with Spar and Microsoft Hungary. Last year, companies spent $3.5 billion on job candidate assessment tests. Given the fact that almost every second employee has to leave the company in the first 18 months, these companies pretty much wasted $1.5 billion on assessment tests, not to mention the additional expenses. Recruitment processes use such tests today, and these tests are broken because these tests are outdated, boring, but mostly unreliable. And this is only going to get more challenging in the future because the entire workforce is changing. In 12 years, 75% of the workforce will be for, from the 20 to 30 year olds. And we all know that these 20 to 30 year olds are different. We are digital native, achieving and impatient. Companies need retooling. They need to connect with these young talents in an environment that we consider natural. And for these young talents, games will make a difference. So we create games that combine psychometrics with data and behavioral science. This way, companies get to know more about the behavior of the candidates, even before they would hire them. This is what regular tests cannot measure at all. We create several games, and every game is focusing on different skill sets and competencies. Our first game is designed to assess job candidates who apply for stressful positions like sales. In this game, players have to build a structure up to the yellow moon by coping with gravity. We build behavioral profiles of every player, measuring three different things, how well they handle stress, level-headedness, how much they think before they act, and persistence. We found that persistent players build higher towers after a major collapse. When a company wants to hire a new salesperson, then first we assess every employee in that sales team. Then we identify the hiring benchmark based on the best performing employee's behavior profile. And then players play the game for 10 minutes and our system automatically does the contextual matching. We match their behavior profile to the predefined star employee's profile. Small and medium businesses will have a free to use version of the basic product. We already started partnerships with career sites. They will have the standard product, but we mainly focus on big enterprises. They have a custom tailored solution with their own brand design. Our pilot has already started with SPAR, and Microsoft Hunger will be the next one. We will have the results by the end of January. There are lots of competitors in this uh, domain selling traditional tests, and there are already businesses doing gamified or serious gaming solutions as well. We will beat our competition with our behavior correlation findings. Our team has more than 20 years experience in behavioral and network science. I'm a business developer, started three businesses before, and we have team members with backgrounds in game development and data analysis. 
In our advisory board, we have a senior HR consultant with more than 10 years experience in different HR fields and the tech entrepreneur who created and sold Hungary's market leader career site. We started out five months ago. We will finish the first pilot by the end of January. And now I'm here to meet investors with enterprise experience and recruitment expertise. Thank you very much for your patience. Hello. Oh, that's loud. Okay. Um, Pubaloo. Pubaloo is bringing gamification to pubs and bars. 22 billion euros are spent in the UK in pubs and bars every year. And this is just our first market. This is Roger. Roger is the manager and owner of Bar Academia here in Trento. And this is Bar Academia on a Friday night packed full of people. The thing is, Bar Academia, like many other bars and pubs, has a problem. This is Academia on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Kind of quiet. So what do they do about it? Well, they organize live music. They organize karaoke. They organize pub quizzes. The problem is, organizing events like this takes time. It's costly, but most importantly, it provides pubs with a low return on investment. This is where Pubaloo comes in. Pubaloo is a tool for pubs and bars to bring new customers to their bar, increase customer retention, and generate more sales for those bars. And all of this with low cost and low effort for their staff. So how does it work? Well, a customer comes into the bar and they buy a drink. With that drink, they're handed a Pubaloo paper ticket. And this ticket prompts them to download our app where they insert the code, opening up the world of Pubaloo to them. In, in Pubaloo, they can play games, win prizes, as well as opportunities to win free drinks in that bar. So why is this great for pubs? Well, we have games like Invitation, where players are rewarded for bringing new friends to that pub. We have games like Lucky Finger, which is a um, roulette-style game, rewarding players for buying more drinks in that pub. And we also have games like Ring of Fire, an in-pub drinking game, getting people who may have never spoken to each other before solving challenges together. And all of these use socialization and user engagement to increase customer retention for the pub. So where are we now? In September, we launched our alpha version in, a, in just one pub here in Trento. And uh, within 10 days, we had 2,000 of our paper tickets handed out. Of those, 800 of them were used by players to, to play Pubaloo and with 200 users. We've just launched in five more pubs, and now we're ready to grow. So where are we going next? Well, our initial revenues come directly from pubs and bars using Pubaloo. We're starting with the Italian and the UK markets. Italy, 20,000 pubs. UK, 50,000, with 7,000 just in London. So this is a lot of pubs, so we want to grow fast. We're partnering with large pub drink suppliers who will spread the word of Pubaloo very quickly. And we're also selling directly to large pub chains in the UK. Now, by partnering with these and selling to these, by the end of next year, we will have more than 300 pubs using Pubaloo, and this large user base will mean we can start making additional revenues through targeted in-app advertising, as well as sponsorship deals with uh, large drinks manufacturers. Now, why is this important? Well, for example, Heineken spends more than two billion every year on marketing alone, and Pubaloo provides the perfect channel companies like this to reach their target audience. So this is our team, Simona, our CEO, Stefano, our mobile app developer, and myself for international sales. If you come to the bar tonight in the theater, Pubaloo will be running. Download our app at pubaloo.com, use our invitation code, and uh, play games and have free drinks. We look forward to speaking to you. Thank you very much. All right, very cool. We're going to wait for my slides to come up in a second. And now I'm going to give you about 15 to 20 minutes keynote about a very relevant topic. Um, European startups, how, if, why, and when, or let's change that, if, when, why, and how to raise money in the United States. OK, <laughs> just so you know, I'm also a professional photographer, so the pictures um, are also mine. 
So let's start. Really quickly, background. You heard before the first line. Uh, now I have a fund called LDV Capital. We have a million dollar fund to invest in early stage companies, uh, 50, 25 to 50K. We like investing in European companies that have business viability in the United States in two verticals, digital imaging and video, and business to business SaaS, because that's my background as an entrepreneur for 19 years. Uh, the mentorships where I work, not only to help entrepreneurs to avoid the mistakes that I made and do the things that I did well, because I made a lot of mistakes and a lot of them can easily be avoided, which I try to help these guys here. Let's go to the next slide. So what's my goal? We all have to have our goal when we're thinking about doing anything, whether or not it's making a delicious meal, making somebody happy, or just living. So what's my goal? My goal is be creative, solve problems, have a lot of fucking fun, and make money while I sleep. But one without all the rest, I'm not happy about. So the goal is in that order, they should all work together and hopefully help others do the same. So our topic today, European startups. Should they, how, when, if, et cetera, all the questions about raising the United States. But there's frequently a mistake that all entrepreneurs do. They think the goal is raising money. The goal is not raising money. It's just a means to an end. I think the goal should be building a successful business that solves a problem, has fun, creativity, and make money while we sleep, right? And so if you can do that without raising money, you should own 100% of the company and make 100% of the exit valuation and forget about the goddamn investors. If you can't do that, sometimes you need more money. You need more ways to build a business. Finding the right investors is key. Okay, so let's talk about case studies. Instead of me telling you what's the right thing to do, I figured it'd be better to give you examples of successful companies in Europe that have grown into the United States and raised capital in the United States. Some of the things from my experience, a lot of my time, half my time is spent in Europe helping entrepreneurs and working with accelerators and looking for companies. And these are some of the top level goals, I think, in order to help answer the questions. If, why, how, where. You need local customer validation. You can get help from either a local accelerator and or local investors. U.S. growth opportunities, so that's key. Do customers in the United States want your product? If they don't, don't raise money in the United States. Don't even waste your time, don't even go there. You need a positive growth trend. That could be customers, revenue, press, uh, scientific papers, whatever it is in your market, you, it's absolutely critical. And you need to have the DNA for an entrepreneur, which equals hustle or uh, passion and all of the rest of what's inside of the DNA. So there's a lot of text on these slides, and I'm going to talk about key points, but you can read them, okay? The key points, okay, Farmeron is a company out of Croatia. I'm actually an investor in there. Farmeron is a B2B SaaS platform helping farmers managing their data online. The team are farmers, so they've got expert DNA. One, check. Two, they created an angel, profile, angel list profile in early 2011 when they were starting to build their business. This helped raise the profile in the United States. Um, they added customers and angel round funding from Seedcamp and TAG and 500 startups. So actually they worked with two accelerators. Then they moved to the States. Then they hired their first US salesperson. The reason they did it is because most of their big customers are in the United States. It's not because they want, just wanted to. Then they raised uh, 1.4 million from NextView in Boston, soft tech ventures in Silicon Valley, um, us and a bunch of other angels, and then launched a product. I asked all of these entrepreneurs that emailed me, I didn't just guess this, I asked them questions and they gave me the answers. Why raise money in the United States? Our most important customers are there. How did you raise money? Through angel.co, actually they got found by Naval, who's the founder and a good friend of mine of AngelList and by 500 startups. They found them via AngelList. That's how they raised that money. Advice, do it only if your customers are actually in the US. So they have an office in Croatia, and they have an office in the United States. Next one, Apiary. Uh, they're in Czechoslovakia. Apiary is a developer tools platform helping companies build web APIs. The team has deep tech knowledge, check. Unique team. They were part of Springboard Accelerator, now, which is now Techstars Europe, with John Bradford. 
and they launched an invite-only product in Europe. They started having validation. They then found investors that are very knowledgeable in that vertical and in the United States. Esther Dyson's famous, and then a co-founder of Heroku, classic domain knowledge. Okay? There might be millions of angel investors out there that you could talk to, but maybe there's only three that are right for you. Find those three people. Go down further, they raise money the next round from Flybridge in the United States, Baseline, Credo. So a mixture of investors in the US and Europe, always leveraging their European network to find the right investors. Why? Winning over the West Coast US tech market means the rest of the world will follow, which is actually right in many verticals. You've got to have the customers in the target audience that is going to use your product. And then they're going to tell everybody else around the world. How? Lots of meetings. And we say this all the time to entrepreneurs, but sometimes they don't believe us. What, lots of meetings to me means 1,000 meetings. If you haven't had 1,000 meetings, you're not working hard enough. If you can plan to have 1,000 meetings, but raise money on the first, congratulations. It's not always that easy. Advice, find local people, ideally founders or angel investors who support you have, and have them introduce you. The best introduction for me is if somebody I trust tells me Apiary is a fantastic team and great company. If you come and tell me, just like in a bar, if you go up to somebody you want to talk to, a man or a woman, they're not going to believe you a stranger. But if you know their best friend, their best friend should tell that person, Evan's really cool, you should invest in his company, or you should go out on a date with him. Whatever it is in life, it's better if somebody else that trusts you makes the introduction. Next. Narrative, another company that I've invested in. The reason I've added a couple that I've invested in is because I know them really well. It also matches this invest in European companies that have viability in the United States. They were formerly called Momoto. They're from Stockholm and opening an office soon in San Francisco. The narrative clip is a wearable automatic camera making five megapixel photos every 30 seconds. The team are serial entrepreneurs. They raised 50K from their local Swedish government. They didn't even try to go raise money elsewhere, okay? Think local first. Then they raised 500 euro from Passion Capital in London, and European angels still did not go to the United States. Then they launched a Kickstarter campaign that, that fortunately took off, and everybody was signing up and pre-ordering this wearable camera that didn't even exist yet. The best thing to do is try to get people to pay for something before it even exists. That's validation. In April 2003, they had 700,000 pre-order. To me, that's validation. That's it, as long as it keeps growing, I invested along with Passion and SEB Bank uh, for a convertible note for the next round. Then they kept on selling. So it's not the entrepreneur saying we're great. Their activity of selling product is the best way to validate that you've got something that people want. They ordered over a million dollars of pre-orders from Kickstarter and their own site without selling anything yet, without finalizing anything yet. And they're just starting to ship now. They raised from two ventures. They were planning to go raise money, and, and many VCs track this traction. And they preempted and asked Passion Capital, hey, what's going on with this company, Momoto? They didn't even talk to Momoto yet, which happens a lot. Investors will talk to each other and say, I got a great company. Well, which one? This one. Did a $3 million round from True Ventures in Silicon Valley, which is top tier venture in Silicon Valley. Passion in us again. And they continue to sell their Kickstarter and they're starting to ship this month. So why invest in the US? It's a key market for them. They had a majority, uh, about 50%, I believe, in the bullet point there, 50% of their customers were US. Validation that there's opportunity in the US, okay? Um, how? Uh, we talked about that already. Advice. Either make plans to move to the U.S., work very hard for months researching and getting quality interest. People can say, which are the investors that invest in my space that want to talk to me? Which are the investors that are European and uh, U.S. investors that want to invest in Europe? In one week, I guarantee all of you, if you look in the right places, from AngelList to Crunchbase to the news to portfolios of VCs, you can have a list exactly those companies interested in investing in Europe. The other people that are not on that list, do not talk to them. Do not waste your time. Do not waste their time. It's really simple. 
you know, if, if a woman likes a tall six foot five guy and the five foot guy comes up to her, they're not interested. It's really simple in life, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you're that six foot five guy. Okay, it's the same thing in business. Next, GrabCAD. Uh, the team is in Estonia. They moved to, had an office in the UK. GrabCAD helps engineers get products to market faster, connecting people, content, and tech. You guys will realize each one of these case studies, businesses are very different, coming from very different geographies. Every single type of sector or team has an opportunity to raise money from somebody. You just have to find that one person. Their team are mechanical engineers and manufacturing expertise. Okay, check. Exact domain expertise for that company. They got local investment of a seed, 256K, and they joined SeedCamp. Then they launched their beta product. Then they joined Techstars in Boston. They moved their executive team to Boston. They said, that's where our customers are. Then they got 3,000 users with a freemium product, and that validated again. And they raised money from Matrix, which is Boston, Atlas, which is Boston, NextView, which is Boston. So they're all talking to each other. They keep on growing, and they raise a Series A from Matrix and Atlas again. So most likely, those companies that pre-invested, they wanted to see the traffic and to see the progress of the company. And they said, these guys are doing great. We don't want to let anybody else invest. Okay, classic scenario. It's a double-edged sword. The big firms, if they invest in you and they don't want to invest, nobody else will want to invest in you. If they do invest, they're more likely to follow on. And you can see they keep on raising money. And now they're at 950,000 users. It's not just because of the money. It's because of their team. But this topic of this keynote is about raising money. So I didn't go into the details about the companies themselves, but the most important thing is the revenue. Why should we be in the US? Be close to the ecosystem. You see a trend, and I'm not just writing this. I emailed these 15, 10 people separately, and they all answered the same thing with different words. So this is my research from other people's expertise. How did they do it? Hustle. Advice, how do you uh, move to the US, otherwise don't waste investors of your time. Investors want to be close to you, so they can help you. Next. Funamo, Italian company. Many of you are probably aware of the company, this, this company. It's another European startup that raised money in the United States and moved to the States. Funamo is a white-label personal cloud solution for mobile operators, device manufacturers, and other mo mobile providers. And some of you probably know them very well. If others don't, they're serial entrepreneurs. They raised about 300K in the US and 300 euro in, the, in uh, Italy in April 2003. So this is 11 years ago, or 10 years ago, very different time period where the answers below will help educate what they had to do to raise money. They launched a commercial, pro they they, they launched a commercial product and then raised $5 million uh, from Walden, which is San Francisco, and HIG. And then in October 2012, 5.75 from a couple other VCs. But the key here is look at the answers that they said. Why? Because 10 years ago, it was the only place to raise serious capital. Now you can raise serious capital in Europe. But the key is how and why does it make sense for you? How? They met 95 funds. You've got to kiss 95 frogs before you get one or two, if you're lucky. Advice, be local if you want to raise money in any place. Transfer-wise, another very different sector. Team is UK, England. Transfer-wise is an online peer-to-peer -peer money transfer platform. Team banking, one guy used to work in the banking industry, and another guy was the first employee of Skype. So when I mean domain expertise for entrepreneurs, and you are a peer-to-peer -peer tra banking transfer service, you've got the first employee at a, the, the biggest peer-to-peer -peer company in the world, and you've got an employee from a banking system, that's what I mean by domain expertise. You can't get more domain experts than that. Funded the company in 2010, beta launched in 2011, Seed Camp 2011, I asked Tavit. Tavit was one of the founders that was at Skype when I was at, with him at Seed Camp. And I said, you know, you have all the contacts, you've made money, why are you doing Seed Camp? Networking, investors, and they're gonna help us focus our product and connect us to the right people. He could have done it on his own. But here's a thing to remember. Do you want 100% of a company that is worth a dollar? Or do you want 1% of a company worth a billion dollars? Okay, you're gonna work at this for five to 10 years don't be greedy with your equity. Find the right people that are going to help you succeed. 
And now watch what they do. They launched the beta, so seed camp. 2012, revenue of about 1,000K, not much revenue. But they had progress and traction. They raised 1.3 from IA Ventures, index tag. Here's the most important one. Max Levitchin, founder of PayPal. Okay, Errol Dalman of Wanga. So the biggest, Betfair, David Yu, three of the biggest banking e-commerce payment platforms in the world are investors in this company. Okay, that's angel domain expertise. Okay, it wasn't easy for them to get it, but I'm saying this is the way to do it. This company can still fail, I hope not, but this is gonna help you succeed in whatever company you have. Next round, they raised, they had about 10,000K in, uh, in British pounds revenue. And who's the next right person? Obviously, Peter Thiel, <laughs> the other PayPal mafia. That fund led the next round, et cetera, et cetera. So why did they invest, uh, raise money in the US? Better investors, better terms, in their words. How? By showing great customer satisfaction and more than 20% month over month growth. You can see a trend in all of these. It's going back to my top six points. Advice, have great growth story. Samantha, I think this is the last case study. Okay, Samantha, Slovenia. Now they have an office in New York City. Samantha recommends your content to a diverse network of engaged communities around the web, bringing new readers to your sites. The team is deep expertise in product and tech. 2007, Angel Round with Seedcamp and Tag. March launched a product, only about 10,000 users growth every year, but growth, then a seed round, and then Union Square Ventures with Eden, et cetera. Why? Because the US will ultimately be our market, and we wanted to be closer to our customers and advertisers. How? We were meeting VCs at events in 2008, so some people here are not raising money today, but they might be in the future. You're always building relationships and helping those investors do what they're doing, and they'll help you. Advice, you need to tell your, your idea to 1,000 people to hit 200 relevant ones, and one to two actually have the power to do something life-changing for your company, okay? This is real. That's also, I think, easier. I would say 5,000 or 10,000 people. Summary, CEO DNA, validation and growth, local early investors, large addressable market. Why? Need expansion capital for U.S. Marketing or development, depending on your company, it'll be different. You probably need a U.S. office and employees. If you want uh, medical tech, you go to Boston. If you want platform tech or other, you go to San Francisco. If you want experts in finance, media, or advertising, you go to New York City. You don't just say, I want to be in San Francisco because it's cool. Why do you go there? You got to go there for a reason. It's just like if you like a certain type of woman or man, you go where the fish are. You go fishing where they are. You can't find an Italian in Alaska. It's really difficult. Where? Where your customers are, where the best new team of members can be hired. How? Target investor with domain knowledge. Angel Co. Co-founder is going to be based in the US. You've got to split your team. You can have the tech here or in Europe, but you need business and sales in the US. That's the best way to do it. Leverage early investors and hustle. Next. Okay. Here's the reality. Only 1% of you will ever raise money. But that's okay. I believe all of you can be in that 1%. If you believe it, you can do it. Okay, here's a quote I'm finishing up. Um, what does hustle really mean? In my words, I'm not going to tell a long story, but another photo of mine, hustle really means no, never really means no. And some of the entrepreneurs have heard this a lot, but for the others in the room, in my mind, no never means no. It means not now. Anything you ask me or I ask you, if you say no, I haven't convinced you yet. I haven't validated whatever it is. If it's your mom or your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your clients, your customers, your partner, they say no. Okay, wh how can I make it better? How can I pursue? How can I improve? You keep updating them every month, especially investors. They might not say no 20 times, but if you keep improving, that 21st time is a higher percentage that they're gonna say yes. In conclusion, let's help each other. We can't win the war if we only work alone. Solve problems, be creative, have fun, improve the world we live in, make money while we sleep. 
as they say here in Boca Lupo, okay? And how does everybody say it? Yeah. One more time. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck, everybody. Obviously, come up and ask me questions afterward if I can help regarding any of that. We're now moving on to our next um, two companies for four-minute pitches. Fanaby, come on up. A round of applause. My name is Antonella, and I'm the founder of Fanaby, the platform for record collectors. Everything starts with a passion. I'm the Kelly Minogue number one fan in Europe, and I manage a community of 8,000 users in Italy. As a collector, I have hundreds of CDs, vinyls, memorabilia, and I don't know what I really have, so often I end up buying duplicates. The existing catalog tools don't meet the real connected needs. That's why we developed Fanaby, a platform to showcase, trade, and manage your collections. But what fans can do with Fanaby? They can finally catalog, so avoiding duplicates, doing real-time search with a ready-to-use database. We can connect and discover the existing item to complete your collection. They can buy and sell stuff because Fanaby is also a marketplace. And talking of marketplace, each year people spend more than $5 billion in music and memorabilia online. So this amount just online. And marketplace is our business model. We take 10% on commission on each transaction in the marketplace. And we're going to test it through our registered users. So how are we going to get them? Vertical community. So Kylie, 6 million, Madonna, 14 million, Abba, 6 million, Justin Bieber, 57 million users. So millions of potential users just in pop music. We have competition, of course. Discogs, the biggest, 1 million revenues. It's the largest discography database, but it's disconnected and no mobile. Our strength is the community, which drives everything else. So we just arrived, but we know fans really well. In fact, we design features that fans are really has for. That's why they see us as best, and that's why this will help us to sell in, uh, in our marketplace. We are collectors first, so we have a connection with fans. We know them. So here is where we're going. We start in February, launching our landing page, and we are collected 6,000 users. Now we are ready with our iOS application, is on the store under review. Really soon we launch our marketplace, including new features. And remember the million? We start with Kylie Minogue, and then we want to reach out other vertical community, such as Madonna, Haba, Justin, and other in pop. This is the team, this is me, I'm a designer and business developer. Alessandro is our hacker and CEO, <laughs> and Elena, she's the hero. She's the only one who can handle my obsessive design and automatically put it on an iPhone, wow. <laughs> At Fanaby, we manage passion, so we aim to become the uh, ref reference for people passion, and this is what separate us from where we want to be. Thank you for your attention. We are fun of it. Hi, everyone. My name is David. I'm here to tell you about Gripiphany, the website that helps you plan better and know your friend's taste. In the past, I have built a recommendations technology company that was acquired by Goodreads and Amazon. I was also the CTO of a profitable location-based company. Now I'm combining my experiences 
to tackle a problem my friends and I have had for a long time. Ex existing tools for, to plan going out suck. Whenever I try to organize my friends, we en end up sending so many emails and texts, sometimes over 30, because everyone has a different opinion about where to go. Current websites have a lot of data, but they have the wrong focus. Most of us don't want to write reviews on Friday night or any other night. When I see reviews on these sites, I also don't know if these people have the same taste as I do. I certainly don't want to read more than 900 reviews just to learn about one place. This is what I want to do. Go out with my friends. See how much fun we're having? We know that the people you go out with are important. This is why we focus on the group. Let me show you what I mean. On Groupiphany, you can create events and invite any of your friends, like many other websites. But Groupiphany takes everyone's taste into account and recommends places that people will be happy with. Seeing why each place is recommended for the group helps me pick a few places for my friends. And they can vote on which ones they want to go to. When voting ends, a winner is picked. We synchronize all the details with Facebook, so you don't need to keep a separate email list or a separate calendar. We piggyback on something everyone already uses for quick adoption. How do we make recommendations, you might wonder? Well, we take the best techniques from our previous company, except we're using even better technology. We take tens of millions of data points, crunch them through a computer cluster, and we create even more data to map out everyone's taste. So when I see a place on Groupiphany, I know which of my friends will likely enjoy the place, even before they have signed up for the site. This is not magic, it's math. Taking the pain away from planning leads to new business opportunities. We are going to charge businesses to offer discounts to our users. Not only will the businesses get more revenue, they'll also get happier customers because we sent them users who are more likely to enjoy the place based on our recommendation technology. Online advertising for Loco is a multi-billion dollar business in the US. We plan to target the big cities there and move beyond. These are our competitors. They have a lot of users and a lot of data but we are going to provide our users with much more personalized information, and information that's useful for the future, rather than just recording and broadcasting what happened in the past. This is our team and advisors. We have several successful startups between us. Um, we have relevant degrees from the best schools in the US, and we've been doing machine learning and big data before they became buzzwords. We plan to launch in January, in 2014, we want to build a small and agile team to improve our product, to improve our recommendation technology, and launch in different countries. Thank you for listening, and I will talk to you later. Okay, just to reiterate a couple key points, uh, I've been helping, uh, honored to help the Tech Peaks team since the beginning as an advisor before we even launched. And as every startup, every accelerator, when there's thousands of accelerators growing around the world, you have to be unique. And we tried to figure out how to make Tech Peaks unique, and we're still learning. These are the key aspects. There's a base of a local great tech university here. International mentors, which we talked about before, and to elaborate, we send, bring those mentors here for a couple days um, in the last six months. And the plan is to bring them for a couple days each session. They, some accelerators just have them remote, but we make sure they come in person. They do one-on-one -on -one sessions, they do presentations, and some even do presentations for the whole community, like Renaud from uh, Eventbrite. International talent, the mixture is key. If you just have one type of Italian designer or Italian developer, developer, I believe it could be valuable by mixing unique expertise from different cultures into one place. There's also, it's like a volcano because some cultures don't mix well, but amazingly this crowd that was challenged in the beginning is a big family now, and I can tell how they're evolving and helping each other. Uh, beautiful location, okay, that's obvious. Uh, accelerator partners, we talked about them. It's an ecosystem. 
Obviously also a grant and matching funds. The grant is more typical in accelerators. The matching funds I have never heard about before. There probably is an accelerator out there, but I've never heard. The key here is, one of the reasons I'm excited, not only because I spent a lot of time in Italy and I love the economy in Italy to increase and improve. Maybe I love Italy and I'd love the economy to improve. Um, and hopefully we can take steps in that direction. Um, on that note, uh, I want to invite up Jenny Alice, who is going to be our next company presenting. Let's go. Hi, I'm Nate from Genialis. We provide bioinformatics solutions to life science labs. Bioinformatics is like IT for life sciences. This is Peter, and he's got leukemia. His life depends whether or not he receives the right dose of his medicines. And this is Carol, the head of a research lab in functional genomics. She wants to help Peter, but in order to do so, she needs to find genes that influence the response of Peter's body to drugs. If she can find those genes, she can help Peter and many others. Uh, our customers at Faculty of Pharmacy in Slovenia are also tackling a drug dosage problem. They're looking for 20 such genes out of 21,000. Now, the problem is that experiments are very expensive and awfully time-consuming. We reduce time and money spent on experiments by at least 10 times using various machine learning methods. We, re we integrate various types of data into a recommendation engine that yields a list of recommended genes. Our academic partner has already solved a very hard gene recommendation problem for one of the major functional genomics labs in the US. But our solution also applies to, into, to many other areas as well. For example, for another customer, National Institute of Biology in Slovenia, we are recommending genes that are responsible for virus resistance in potatoes. And there are other areas as well. For example, drug production, biofuels, food improvement, and others. In the last few years, the price of genome sequencing has become extremely low. The number of daily users of the National Center for Biotechnology Information has increased in the same period, which means more and more labs can afford and work with biological data. First, we focus on academic research market as it has the lowest barrier to entry. We estimate there are at least 90,000 labs in the world that work with functional genomics. And based on our sales, we estimate they will spend at least $15,000 per year on gene recommendation. Later on, we'll also target biotech and pharmaceutical companies that cannot afford their own bioinformatics departments. We're just finalizing our first two paid trials. Um, so we are just finalizing our first two paid trials. We, our goal is to automate gene recommendation process and we get most of our leads through our own bioinformatics events called BioBash. Also, we are working on scientific publications that will gain us publicity. Our direct competition are in-house experts with back background in computer science and other bioinformatics startups. But our main differentiator is that we provide automated gene recommendation as opposed to doing it manually. We are looking for biotech investors with domain expertise, and we are a very interdisciplinary team who firmly believes in our project. Thanks. Hello, I'm Daniele, co-founder and CEO of Chicharus a B2B search technology for travel companies. We've been venture-backed, and we're very happy to say we're starting to serve global brands. Let's start. So, travel market is huge. More than one billion people travel every year. Everyone wants to have a great experience, and everyone is different. 
Some people like jazz and golf, some others may like beer and shopping. And the problem for companies that operate in this space is that they need to address all these unique interests, but it's not that simple. Because they want to deliver a great experience, they need to improve conversions and make more money. So we have a solution for them. We provide a very easy technology that can be integrated. It's just one line of code. And it actually starts from the experience the travelers want to do, from the interest. Let's make an example so you understand. Let's say we are on a book flight um, website that uses our services. And you want to have an experience which is all about impressionists, golf, and jacks, for example. We're able to, the website is able to look at, locate the best destinations where to enjoy this activity. So our magic here is that we're able to attach every type of experience, every type of interest on the service, in this case, on the flights. And the way we can do this is because we use a proprietary semantic technology that actually scans the entire web and understand what can be done in a territory, in a destination. Another example. For a book hotel company, let's say you want to go to Ibiza, Spain, have some fun, you like the wine, music, and beach, you want to find the best hotel to, to have this experience. And it can be done in just one click. Let's say you have maximum 100 euros or 200 euros. So rather than getting crazy to see, checking them up, what can be done around, location, prices, this can be done in one click, and there is an explanation what's around. You got the point. So we started this from our CTO um, thesis, master thesis, and then we worked with PhDs and scientific research centers. And the way we make money is we license our APIs to companies. For example, American Express, which is the biggest tour operator in the world, is using this technology for their concierge service. And they receive everyday requests like, I'm in Naples, I want to eat in a restaurant, I'd like to try authentic local cuisine, and I want to go with my lovely dog, for example. So they're now able to reply this experience, this request in seconds, and they're making more customers happy. Other customers, paying customers are, for example, Fiat, old travel portals. We have two operators, so we're starting to sell to these guys. And we just closed commercial discussion with Poste for a new travel section. Our goal now is to hit the first million of euros revenues in the next 12 months. This is the team, it's me. I have experience in uh, business experience in Silicon Valley, UK and Italy. Then we have semantic skills down there in the CTO. Our sales bulldozer, which is um, Alexandro Marchesini, we met here in TechPix. In, he has global sales experience. And also the advisor have B2B travel experience, <coughs> PhD that works in the semantic space. The two investors are Dpixel and Principia, and we partner with the National Research Center of Pisa, which is the top lab for research in the travel and tourism. So we're in TechPix. We'll be in Denmark at Next Step Challenge from, since from uh, January to grow the business. And our goal is to meet and find strategic investors to help us to grow. If you're interested, just come talk to us. Thank you. I think I just deleted my, no, I didn't delete my notes. OK, uh, very cool. We are now going to take a mixed break. So what's going to happen is a 15 minute break here. And uh, Vittorino Filippas is going to talk about entrepreneur lessons. We would like all the investors and all the entrepreneurs from TechPeaks to go back downstairs and have a networking session for the next 45 minutes. In 45 minutes, um, actually at 4.45, we're going to come back up here. And I'm honored to have a fireside chat with John Bradford from Techstars. And he's going to ask me questions, and I'm going to ask him questions. And we'll ask the audience to ask questions as well. Okay, so 15 minute break here. Investors and entrepreneurs, please go downstairs and everybody come back at 445. And then Vittorino will give a great presentation to everybody else that's gonna be the public that's gonna stay here. Okay, thank you very much. When I wake up, yeah, I 